Thank you. Thank you, Professor Behra. Thank you very much for uh, taking time from your busy schedule and addressing the uh, gathering over here. So we are very thankful to you for uh, joining us in this endeavor. Uh, I would also like to mention that we will also be um, having uh, subject specific uh, tools in this uh, uh, training where uh, people will be breaking into breakout rooms and as as per their uh, subject area so that subject specific tools can also be uh, demonstrated to them and they can also develop some quality digital content in their uh, respective subject areas thank you over to miss nidhi thank you ma'am now i take the opportunity to thank all of you who are here starting from Professor Amarindra Behra, sir, who is a joint director of CIT and CRT for enlightening us, Professor Indu Kumar for providing us overview of the program and also for her enthusiastic support for organizing this workshop and all the participants for their presence. Thank you and welcome everyone once again. Now we are going to begin sessions of for today. And uh, with this, um, starting from the first session, which is on ICT initiatives in India with emphasis on Diksha. I request Professor Indu Kumar to provide valuable information on ICT initiatives so that our participants can start using these initiatives, tools um, regularly in their classroom. Indu ma'am, over to you. Just give us two minutes. Next. Yes, so uh, this presentation, as you can see from the screen, from the title of this um, slide, Digital Education Initiatives and a Way Forward. So next slide, please. Next slide. So here you can see this is the mission of Central Institute of Educational Technology. So what all we do, we promote utilization of educational technology via radio, TV, satellite communications and cyber media, either um, separately or in combination. So this is one of the important mandate of CIET and CRT. And we also uh, ensure it's appropriate use to enhance learning and improve productivity in the classrooms and schools. Because ultimately our objective is to enhance the quality of education, especially school education and teacher education. Then achieve excellence in research, design, development and production of educational technology resources, which this workshop is meant for and software for children and teachers, including uh, parents. Then contribute to teacher education through the, the convergence of appropriate technologies. Uh, just um, pardon me for a moment. I have to take one important phone call. Just
yes, uh, sorry for the interruption. Then uh, one of the important maintain of CIT is to contribute to teacher education through the convergence of appropriate technologies that we continuously do. And this program is also targeted to meet this mission of CIT and CRT. Then build capacities of teachers, teacher educators for quality improvement in school education. So this quality building is in e-content development and also in various uh, technologies um, that we do. Then disseminate digital resources through portals, app, broadcast and non-broadcast mode. So uh, Diksha is one of the important portal and some other portals Professor Behra mentioned in his uh, opening remarks like Swayam, Swayam Prabha, um, uh, Diksha, e Patshala. So there are a lot of portals and apps that we uh, disseminate our digital resources through and uh, that are done through broadcast and non-broadcast mode. Through app, uh, we do uh, in non-broadcast mode and through uh, DTH, TV channels and radio channels, we do um, dissemination through broadcast mode. And act as a no, no, nodal resource center on educational technology for school education media softwares and implementation of national level policy programs and schemes. So that is also one of the important mandate. As we know in NEP 2020, chapter 23 and 24 are dedicated to educational technology. So implementation of those chapters are the mandate of CIT and CRT as of now. Then to advise, assist and coordinate academic and technical activities of educational technology and ICT sales of SIET, SCRTs, etc. So that is also one of the mandate that we adhere to. Uh, then uh, catering to the needs of these statistics were already mentioned by Professor Behra, 1.5 million schools, 8.5 million teachers and 260 million students. So we deal with such a vast uh, population of teachers, schools and students, So um, which is among us uh, if we compare it with other nations. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So um, uh, the numbers uh, are uh, first and the foremost challenge that we deal with. Apart from that, there are uh, other issues and challenges for um, implementing technology in education that we um, face, that we all encounter. So diversity is one of the challenge that we all encounter. There is linguistic diversity, there is uh, diversity in uh, culture, there is geographical diversity, cultural diversity, linguistic diversity. So developing digital resources and implementing educational technology for such a diverse country in itself is a big challenge. For example, we have to develop digital contents in multiple languages. Uh, 22 languages are already uh, scheduled, uh, are already listed in the eighth schedule of our constitution. So these are only 22 languages uh, which are listed there, but we have um, around uh, um, more than 1500 languages and uh, dialects which are spoken in our country. And we have to reach to the last mile child. So that is how diversity poses a big challenge to us to have digital resources in these many languages. Apart from it, when it comes to development of curriculum, then also diversity play a pivotal role in that. Because um, if, if we are teaching any subject and developing digital contents for that subject, that diversity also uh, need to be reflected there. For example, agricultural practices in different locations are different. So we cannot just have digital content and have the description in textbooks of one kind of agriculture practices that practice that is being professed in our country. So we need to meet uh, challenges which emerge because of the geographical diversity as well. So one digital content on uh, one concept will not 
suffice. We have to take care of this diversity while uh, developing content, while developing curriculum. Then infrastructure in our country is also differentiated. A uniformity of infrastructure in the, is not there. In small countries like um, Finland, Japan, which we uh, give example of that they are educationally very developed and far ahead than us. So having a, a similar infrastructure in smaller countries is easier than uh, the uh, country like India. So we have to, while implementing technology, also consider the kind of infrastructure which is in place in different states and union territories. And this differentiation in infrastructure also emerged because uh, we uh, have education in the concurrent, uh, in, in, uh, in both the lists. It is also in state list and it is also in central list. So, uh, uh, keeping in view uh, that the uh, infrastructure in different states and union territories is uh, different because they are independent in the implementation of educational uh, considerations and uh, it, it also encompasses educational technology. Then large scale we have already mentioned, we have a large scale on which we have to implement things. Then, uh, Technology competencies. Please go back to the previous slide. Previous slide. Previous, you are moving it ahead. Yes, I haven't completed this. So technology competencies of uh, teachers and teacher educators also differ. And it um, differs state to state, school to school. So we also need to develop technology competencies of teachers. And for that, we are harnessing the potential of different portals to develop digital competencies of uh, teachers. Then quality digital resources is also one of the challenge that we are facing. So we need to develop quality digital resources as well to be disseminated through various uh, platforms uh, and uh, through various modes like broadcast and non-broadcast mode. Then convergence in efforts is also very, very important, very, very essential. The wheel need to be reinvented again and again. If uh, uh, we are uh, working in one dimension, then other states should also know that that what efforts are being done at national levels and uh, what are the uh, the facilities which are available. Like Diksha uh, has been envisaged as one nation, one platform. So, uh, and it is a federated um, infrastructure which also gives spaces to different states and union territories. So same platform can be used by different states and union territories independently. They have their freedom. Uh, they are uh, in their own spaces. So like that, we can think of convergence of effort. We need not to have 36 uh, portals for 36 states and union territories, but one nation, one platform can be utilized uh, by different states. This is one of the example. So uh, such convergence of effort uh, should be there in all uh, domains of educational technology and ICT. Next slide, please. Next slide. So uh, these are uh, some of the first areas of uh, technological interventions which are reflected in NEP 2020. I have already covered some of them in my previous slide, like digital infrastructure, portals, apps, and tools, digital resources, telecast and broadcast, e-governance, Online assessment and examination is something which I haven't yet uh, explained and uh, taken up. So this is also uh, one of the area which is reflected in NEP 2020, because during the time of COVID pandemic, we realized that uh, online assessment and examination is one of the challenge that we have to um, work towards. Uh, in in, in uh, the emergency situation which was emerged during COVID, 
so online assessment and examination emerged as a big challenge although uh, india as a nation tried to take education forward by um, uh, by various modes but uh, how to assess students uh, was uh, one of the um, area of major concern and it was it was also realized that there was a lot of learning loss also during this period because there wasn't a robust system of online assessment and examination so as uh, per NEP 2020 we need to come up with a robust online assessment and on the examination uh, system and that CIT and CRT is already working towards we are uh, into a process of envisioning a, a PAL uh, tool uh, also, and also um, how how to go about doing online assessment and uh, examination. But then building digital competencies of students is uh, one of the important area which is reflected in NEP 2020. But we witness that students are more proficient in uh, their digital competencies as far as handling devices and uh, using ICT and ET uh, is concerned. But uh, say, uh, the, uh, the competency dimensions for students are different, like they also need to be proficient in taking care of their own safety and security. So uh, this is something that they have to learn. And we as teacher educators and teachers also need to learn because then only we can uh, make them proficient in this dimension and protect uh, them while they are in digital spaces. So content technology pedagogy integration is also one of the major area which is reflected in NEP 2020. Uh, because uh, technology um, cannot be seen in isolation. So content, a proper blend of content pedagogy and technology need to be there. And this, uh, that is how we can make best use of available technologies. Then use of assistive technologies for the young children is also something which is reflected in NEP 2020. So we also need to identify and uh, practice assistive technologies for the good of the young children. And then capacity building of teachers and teacher education, I have already um, explained. Then laying down standards for different um, technology dimensions is also very, very important. For example, digital content development. So how to develop quality digital content, these standards should be laid down for that. And CIT and CRT has uh, already developed guidelines for digital uh, for uh, the development of digital content for school and teacher education, and also for the young education. So these guidelines have set standards for the development of digital contents. So like that, um, uh, on every aspect of technology, we need to lay down the standards, like for cyber safety and security also. What it is all about, how uh, uh, can we take it forward? Then intensive research in ET is another area that need to be taken care of. Because uh, 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 there uh, is an scarcity of quality researches in uh, on ET and ICT. So until and unless we uh, do uh, constant research in uh, the area which is very dynamic, which keep on uh, changing every day as uh, technology changes. So uh, until and unless we uh, do intensive research, we cannot uh, keep pace with the changes which are taking place in the area now of technology. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Who, who is changing these slides? Please be alert and change uh, them. And if, uh, I don't know whether there is some technical glitch. 
So these are um, six major digital initiatives which are uh, being done at national level. PME Vidya is one which encompasses the uh, uh, DTH channels. And as Professor Behra mentioned that recently government has launched 200 DTH channels for different states and UTs. So all these channels come um, uh, under the umbrella of PME Vidya. Diksha portal is also uh, um, comes under the major umbrella of PNA Vidya, so which is a federated platform, which I have already mentioned, where uh, uh, different states and UTs are um, uh, utilizing these spaces on Diksha as tenants. Then e Parshala is in the form of a mobile app and also in the form of a um, portal where uh, digital textbooks in different formats are available. So they are available in ebook formats, uh, flipbook, and also uh, in PDF formats. Then Nishta is one of the major uh, initiative for uh, the holistic um, enhancement of uh, teachers and school heads. So it is a national initiative for school heads and teachers for holistic advancement. So different uh, Phases of trainings are uh, being organized under this particular initiative for enhancing the quality of teacher education. Then SWAM is another platform where all the PG courses are there and NCRT is having MOOCs uh, related to school education on this platform. Then ICT curriculum is another uh, uh, initiative that CIT is into the process of implementation. Next slide, please. So um, this is about PME Vidya. What is the focus of PME Vidya? So it is, there, as I have mentioned in uh, the previous slide um, uh, about uh, the convergence of efforts. So PME Vidya is also working towards this convergence by unification of efforts enabling multi-mode access to education so what is multi-mode education so pme with their focuses on developing multi-channel learning continuum so there is television radio diksha special e-contents and online courses which are encompassed in pme with them and Diksha, um, the television and radio are the focus of discussion for resilient and coherent access as well. Next slide. So this is the present status of PME with the 12 channel which are being run by NCRT. So you can see the number of videos which are uh, disseminated for classes 1 to 12. You can also see the number of ISL program programs in Indian sign languages, which are disseminated through um, portals and also through PMT with their DTA channels. So 5,416 live shows have been done covering uh, 3,435.5 hours of work. Uh, a training based on alternative academic calendar that it, it was done during the time of pandemic. Then 9,422 content um, reviewed by NCRT and IOS, NVS, uh, and uh, different organizations. And 4,091 pieces of uh, Curriculum-based radio programs uh, are broadcasted by NCRT through 400 radio um, stations and 3,037 live sessions on iRadio and Geo Seven mobile app um, are done. So that is how for, uh, for taking care of resilience, we are uh, utilizing different modes, multi-mode delivery of educational content. Next slide. So uh, this is the viewership detail. You can go through it later. Uh, we will share the presentation with you. So uh, yeah, next slide. 
uh, after this session, uh, please share this presentation in the group which is created for this. So this is the feedback mechanism that we um, have created because uh, content being disseminated through any mode, be it uh, uh, radio, be it television, uh, also need to receive feedback. So we have created a IVRS system. Also, we are receiving feedback through email and uh, through different WhatsApp groups. So this is uh, something that we are doing. We have developed a, con a constant uh, feedback mechanism also. So these are the details. You can uh, check them later. Next slide. So uh, on Deeksha, uh, we have uh, created uh, special verticals for um, some of the important areas of consideration which are reflected in NEP 2020. So there is a separate vertical on foundational literacy and numeracy because it has to be taken care of in a mission mode and Nipun Bharat is the mission. Then education for all vertical is for adult education. Virtual labs are there to have virtual labs on the Iksha. Then there is another vertical called Jadwi Pitara, which uh, um, contains content for early childhood care and education. And we are into uh, a process of developing a special vertical for children with special needs as well. So uh, Diksha carries all these things. You can see it is a repository of ed open educational resources. Uh, open by edu open educational resources, I mean that they are disseminated through a Creative Commons licensing policy. So uh, on licensing and uh, intellectual property right, you will be having a separate session to um, know the nitty gritties of it's a collaborative platform because all these states and UTs are um, there and we are working in collaboration. Then curriculum aligned content, then analytics are also there. It also uh, ensures multilingual support. Right now we have digital content on the Iksha in 36 to 37 languages and offline access is also being ensured. Next slide. So uh, uh, we are also making effort to uh, bridging the physical and digital uh, world by energizing the textbooks. All our physical textbooks are also uh, energized by having a chapter wise QR codes on them. And if they are scanned through an app, uh, the QR codes, then uh, digital content aligned to those QR code can be seen. So like that, physical and digital world are being organized. We have also developed uh, the uh, augmented reality content for our textbooks and they can also be um, seen in our textbooks starting from um, the science and mathematics uh, textbooks. Next slide. Yeah. So these are the variety of digital contents uh, which are there on Diksha. Uh, one is energized textbooks, then assessment questions, infographics, e-courses, guidelines and handbooks, uh, video and uh, including ISL videos, interactive and immersive content, which is um, gamified content. So you can see uh, also see gamified contents on Diksha, audios and worksheets. Next slide, please. So uh, in uh, this slide, you can see uh, the e-contents based on universal design of learning because they, uh, they uh, make sure the utilization of uh, all the senses that we have. They have a stimulus for eyes, uh, more senses I can see, uh, uh, ear, so. Uh, there are content which uh, are in DAISY format, which can be uh, listened uh, to. Then uh, the uh, contents are also there in sign languages. So uh, as you can see from the uh, screenshot that each chapter has been developed in sign language also. 
it has captions and it has uh, audio for touch we have uh, uh, our maps in embossed form which can be touched and felt by uh, the uh, visually impaired children so like that we are trying to develop content based on universal design of learning next slide please next so ncrt uh, has also liberated diksha for coherent access uh, which can be seen in the previous slide please go back to previous slide yeah so all the um, uh, programs uh, which are disseminated through our dth channels have a qr code because um, uh, we uh, have more than uh, one children also in one household and if they both want to watch the channel of their respective class and if they also have a mobile device with them smartphone with them so one child can scan the qr and watch the program of his or her class in the mobile and other child can watch the program of his or her class on dth channel also all the programs which are disseminated through uh, DTA channels are uh, linked with the QR codes of the energized textbooks that we have on Diksha. So that is how coherent access is made sure, sure to have uh, disseminated contents on Diksha as, as well. If a child is missed a program, he or she can always scan the QR code uh, on the textbooks and watch that program later. Next slide. Yeah, physical I have already spoken about, so we can skip this slide. So Vidya Dan is one another initiative that we have, and this is also for the convergence of effort. If different organizations and institutions are developing digital content, so they can uh, give away that content uh, for Diksha through this Vidyadan initiative. Uh, they can directly upload the content if uh, we create project for them on Diksha. After undergoing a process of review, those content can be made live on uh, Diksha. Next, please. Next slide. So uh, this is micro improvement initiative that we uh, recently uh, completed. So uh, yeah, th th this is also one of the capabilities on Diksha and we organized Vidya Amrit Mahasab using this particular um, uh, capability where the uh, teachers from all over the country submitted their projects uh, to be evaluated by a national level jury. And the theme of this uh, particular Mahotsav was innovative pedagogies. So 27 states participated uh, in that 2.6 lakh projects were submitted and 63 projects were submitted for the national level jury. Next slide, please. So these are the glimpses of Vidya Amrit Mahotsav. Next slide. So this is Vidya Samiksha Kendra that is also being led by CIT and CRT. So the screenshot is of Vidya Samiksha Kendra situated as CIT and CRT, but we are also supporting all these states and union territories to establish their own Vidya Samiksha Kendra uh, at uh, their state level so that uh, the uh, data driven decision making can be done. If we have, like, these are the programs which are there on NCRTs with your Samiksha Kendra, like ETBs, Nishtha, Micro Improvements, PM Potion, National Achievement Survey, U Dice Plus, PGI, Nipun Bharat, NCRT Quizzes, National Curriculum Framework. So, how these particular programs are progressing can be uh, seen uh, through data emission in the Vidya Samiksha Kendra. Like, uh, what is the status of Nishtha implementation? What are the states and union territories which need to be handhold further in the implementation of Nishtha? Then also, what is the status of the uh, energized textbooks on Diksha? 
if some states are feeling any uh, uh, bottlenecks in that, uh, they, they, they can be supported from the national level. So that is the entire uh, purpose of having Vidya Samiksha came just uh, see data driven decision making. Next slide. So, uh, uh, NCRT has shared uh, a starter pack with 23 uh, states. You can see uh, the list of those states. Uh, this is uh, the uh, software on which is uh, being used for establishing Vidya Samiksha Kind. And the name of software is uh, CQ. So, with some preloaded programs, we share, uh, we have already shared this software with 23 states and union territories. Next slide. So, uh, in this uh, slide, you can see glimpses of AR VR lab and uh, at our experiential learning center. We have an experiential learning center uh, situated as CIT. NCRT, and we entertain school teachers administrations uh, here for the demonstrations uh, of next. So uh, this is uh, the um, uh, uh, dissemination through educational apps. So these are some of the apps that NCRT manages. So this is Diksha, Ipatshala, Nishtha, PM, Evidya, AR app, NAS app, Ipatshala scanner app, SSP Mauritius app that we developed for Mauritius, NCF app, Dishank app, and Precious app next. So, uh, a precious app especially is newly designed app, which is for the screening of disabilities which exist among children in schools. So, here you can see uh, the how uh, this uh, pre-assessment holistic screening tool on precious uh, makes uh, sure uh, to for uh, the uh, identification of uh, disabilities. Slide. So this is the dashboard of Prashast app and the data is of 16th May. Maybe we can update this data later. Next slide. Next. So uh, this is the status of our continuous professional development programs. We are doing it through NISTA, through CPD courses uh, on Diksha, then through MOOCs for school education and online capacity building on ET and ICT through television. So this is the status of uh, CPDs. Next, please. So uh, there are four phases of NISHTA which uh, um, uh, are into the process. Three have been completed, like NISHTA Elementary, NISHTA Secondary, NISHTA FLN, and NISHTA ECCE is ongoing. And you can also see the coverage of uh, teachers under each NISHTA program. Next. And it is also reflected in our Vidya Samiksha Kendra. So this is the screenshot of the portal of Siam. Next, please. Next. So uh, this is ICT curriculum. Next. So these are standards and guidelines developed by uh, CIT for digital education. So you can see here Pragyata guidelines for the implementation of digital education, guideline for the development of e-content, guidelines for the development of e-content for school and teacher education and for disabled children. Next slide. So these are guidelines in English and Hindi for cyber safety and security. Next. We 
he has given us the next slide. So these are some of the national and international collaborations that CIET is doing. So you can see here the logos uh, here like Google, Xstep, UNESCO, UNICEF, Amrita, CDAC, and uh, Sri Satya Sai Vidya Vahini and HP. And here you can see Bhutan, uh, Mauritius, and um, uh, South Korea and other nations we are collaborating with. And also Nepal, we conducted training for them. So these are some of the uh, appreciations that CIT received for uh, taking forward digital education in the nation. Next, please. Next, I think I have covered everything. Thank you very much for the patient hearing. And I uh, am uh, handing over to um, Alok further. Thank you. Alok or Nidhi, whosoever is there, or Diksha, these three people will be there for the entire uh, five days. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the wonderful session and thank you for enlightening us. Uh, I would request all the participants.